Oh, epoxy, epoxy, how I love epoxy. Such good stuff. Let's see. Still not really liking the way these handles are fitting, but I guess we'll deal with it. Let me get you zoomed out a little bit. Okay. This is just run-of-the-mill five-minute epoxy. Works quite well for what I'm doing. So we'll start, we'll uh, epoxy the collet on first. Doesn't take a whole heck of a lot, but... Come on. When they say this stuff is five minutes, they're not joking. They mean it. There we go. Nice tight fit on there. Some of this excess off. So I'll we'll double check this, which way it fits on here best. Really not digging that fit, but it's going to have to work. Next one we do will definitely have scales.
right, so kind of a short one, but this is where we are at with our giveaway draw knife that's been owed since, you know, for a long time. It's not, it's turning out nice, but not as, it's not as good as I want it. So, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, a lot of room for improvement here, but the finish is coming out nice. I get the curvature that I wanted on the uh, on the blade of this thing. Now, draw knife design to me, handles like this are not the traditional, but I find for me at least, it's a lot more comfortable for me to use it like this. It seems a lot more natural in the hands than having them swept back. Uh, you can get a lot, a lot more leverage on it, and I notice that the handles don't come off and they don't loosen up quite so much as the traditional style. Of course, when you're talking the traditional style, the ones with the handles, I mean, those had probably had a ton of use. They're really old. The wood's really dried out on them. So it's not really the uh, tool's fault or the maker's fault. It's just the age of things. And when that happens, you should really repair it. But uh, I tell you what, that deburring wheel does a really fine job of polishing metal. Uh, really happy with that. Now, we've got to polish up the uh, copper uh, collets a little bit. And get those get those nice and uh, shiny we've got to poly the handles yet I've got to make sure I've got them they're fairly even but they're not perfect I've got them the same length and all that good stuff but uh, I think the heat treat and the temper on this turned out pretty well that edge is nice and hard the spines not as hard that's kind of what I was going for seems how this is a tool where you're gonna put a lot of you're gonna have a lot of uh, it's going to be a lot of force on this thing, especially if you're peeling logs, stuff like this. Now, this thing isn't a giant, but it's nice and wide. If I had the handles, the reins, to where they were more traditional, this wouldn't be as wide. But seeing as how the handles are nice and wide, you should be able to get at least a, a good 10, 12 inch log, no problems, without scraping your hands on the bark. Uh, for bigger stuff, if you guys have been around for a while, you saw the big one I made. A couple of years ago, I mean, that thing's all in all, it's probably about that long, and I was peeling 30 inch logs with it without dragging my knuckles on the, uh, without dragging my knuckles on the bark. I'm always having trouble talking here, but um, yeah, I'm happy with it. We'll just keep going. It's almost done. We're almost ready to send it out, and I'll be, uh, I'll feel a lot better having this sent out. And this is kind of giving me. Some good practice for when I go to start making these on a regular basis. But definitely going to have to build some things to make this a little faster because uh, not going to make any money turning one out a year, that's for sure. <laughs> but part of that's busyness and things like that. Things happen, you know, injuries and stuff like that. But uh, so anyway, that's where we're at. Well, I'll give you guys a little bit closer look. And there she is. So anyway, I'll catch you guys on the next one.